try that again because that's usually the sign that it's time to find your seat. Coffee hour is over. Pre-church coffee hour. There we go. Good morning. I want to welcome you here today under God's beautiful tapestry. If there's one place more beautiful than our meeting house, it's, well, what God's provided. I wish God would have provided some bigger fans uh, for this morning, but uh, hopefully it stays cool enough here for everybody. Uh, this morning is a, um, is a special Sunday in the life of the church. This morning is Confirmation Sunday, and... Um, and for that reason, there are guests that are here today. We won't embarrass our guests by asking them to stand up, but generally speaking, they're family members who have come to, um, to watch their nieces, their nephews, their grandchildren all come together and, um, and be confirmed on this Sunday. So special words of welcome to those of you that are with us here today for the first time or one of the first few times. We hope this morning that you find the blessing that God has in, in store for you. God knows the blessing you need, and it's yours for the taking. Now, I, I want to apologize up front so that you know, um, during the order of confirmation, because these are important pictures for parents, I will be wearing my very heavy, unbreathable robe um, and then take it off when it's done. I apologize in advance that I will probably look like I just climbed out of a swimming pool, um, but a good photo shoot on these occasions for the sake of remembering it is important. Um, so you'll just have to put up with me looking like I climbed out of that swimming pool uh, for the rest of the service. Um, but we want you to uh, enjoy the service. There are no masks necessary this morning. We invite you to sing and sing vigorously. That's your part of the service as well. And then afterwards to visit with the confirmands to congratulate them um, and um, make them feel special as they become adult members in the life of our church. I have uh, just a couple of very brief announcements to make this morning. Uh, we're still living in COVID world, and so some things are still different than they have been in the past. Next week would be our annual meeting that we would hold in the life of the church to say thank you to those who've served uh, this year and uh, welcome on board those who are replacing some of those people. And we usually uh, give an annual report uh, that people can read what's been going on in the different aspects of the church. But because our church computer got corrupted, um, our administrator, Alice, lost all of the emails. She has to re-enter all of the emails to send it out digitally rather than on paper. But if you're one of those people who really loves reading an annual report, it's not the financial report, it's the annual report about what we've been up to. There are copies of it in the back there, on, I think on the table. And um, if they run out, because there's a big rush and run on them this morning, um, you can call the church office and Alice has more copies um, up at the church uh, and they're available for you. So our annual meeting will be next Sunday June 13th, immediately following church. You can just stay in your pew. It will be very quick, but our bylaws say that we need to do that, so we will, but we'll only keep you there for a couple of minutes to just to prove a couple of things. All right, so I think we've got that all covered. Again, good morning. We hope you find the blessing you need, and then come back and join us if you'd like for the rest of the blessings that God has in store for you. If you're a family member this morning, or parents, when the confirmation that you're here to see comes up, feel free to stand to find a good angle and get a picture if you'd like. We're okay with that, because those are memories we want you to have and the family to have. Just don't take pictures of me soaking wet after I take the robe off. 
I will hold that against you if I'm working the gates of heaven when you get there someday. All right? So, welcome. Enjoy the service this morning. And let's take a quick moment to center ourselves in preparation for this morning's worship. Let's rise, if you are able, and join together in our opening hymn, appropriately enough, Here I Am, Lord. The words are here for you. I, the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry. All who dwell in deepest sin, my hand will save. I who made the stars of night, I will make their darkness bright. Who will bear my light to them? Whom shall I send? Here I am. I am Lord, is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. 
I will go, Lord, if you lead me. I will hold your people in my heart. There are fewer words that are appropriate for a Sunday like this for our young people today. Please be seated. Let's join our hearts together in a word of prayer. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for gathering us together on this beautiful day, for the gathering of family, of friends, of young people, of children, a gathering of your spirit within each of us. Bless this time together this morning as we acknowledge these young people and their faith and their decision to be confirmed in that faith. Pour out your spirit upon them. Give them hope and courage for the days ahead. And be with us as we bring them in to the fold and this family of faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. With things getting back closer to normal, um, things are opening, churches are opening yeah. again, and, uh, but we're getting a call, and that call is to get back to worship, to come home to our home church, to come home. This is softly and tenderly. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling. Calling for you and for me See on the portal he's waiting and watching Watching for you and for me Come home Come home Ye who are weary come home Earnestly Tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling oh, for you and for me. Oh, for the wonderful love he has promised, promised for you and for me. Though we have strayed, he has mercy and pardon, pardon for you and for me. Come home, come home, ye who are weary, come home, earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me, calling for us to come home. Mrs. Weller is here to do activities with you up at the tent. You have a nice tent. It can be like a little party, um, and you can have a ton of fun doing crafts. And, of course, we have bubble blessings uh, for anyone that that might sound interesting, interesting to. So all the kids are invited if they'd like to go. Mrs. Weller, could you wave your, wave your hand? If you guys would like to go, take your chairs with you just in case and go ahead and head up to the tent. Everybody wave goodbye. Bye-bye, kids. We'll see you in a little while. Thursday, maybe. Oh, don't laugh. Wait till you get the bill for the babysitting. Uh, let's now hear God's holy word, and Alexa will take the first reading. Our gospel reading this morning comes from Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 to 34. Do not worry. 
Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And can any of you by worrying at a single hour to your span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, how they neither toil nor, s nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore, do not worry, saying, what will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things, and indeed your heavenly Father knows that you need all of these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, so that all things will be given to you as well. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. So today's trouble is enough for today. Thank you, Alexa. Our Old Testament reading this morning is found in the book of the prophet Isaiah, 40th chapter, the 31st verse. But those who wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will, not ru they will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. This is God's holy word. May we be blessed with understanding in our hearing of it. Please be seated. Can you bring that uh, item? And I'm going to move this over. I want to say a few words to our confirmands this morning. First, I want to say how proud I am of all of you. It's a two-year process. Hold, just hold that, yeah, for now. It's a two-year process, and you've all been faithful to it, showing up. And then, on top of it, being the only group we've ever done this with that had to go and switch over to Zoom to continue it and move it along. And you were all very patient with it. You all participated. And as I say each year, I learn as much from you as you may have learned from me or the staff that works with you. But your parents need to hear how proud I am and how wonderful the work that all of you did. You stretched yourself, you were honest, you were open, and you opened up with the things you believe, the doubts that you have, and that's all we could ever ask of you. And here you are today, about to get confirmed. Now, Scotty and I are gonna lay this open, and you'll know soon enough why we have this. And I'll let Scotty, all right, pick your side, Scotty. There we go. I'll let Scotty open it up fully. Any of you confirmands know what this is? It's a parachute. This is the kind that they use um, in preschools for the kids to play with. 
I would not advise that you jump out of a plane with this. Um, but that's what this is. It's a parachute. Now, I want to tell you a story. And please, the rest of you, pay attention, because I think the story applies to all of us in our lives at some point. Captain Charles Plum, a Vietnam War veteran, was in a restaurant once, a number of years back, having dinner with his wife. He was retired at the time, but while he was having dinner with his wife, a man got up from a table, about two tables away, and came over to him and said, you're Captain Charles Plum. Plum turned and said, well, yes, I am. He said, you served on the aircraft carrier Kitty Hawk during the Vietnam War. Captain Plum said, well, yes, I did. And he started wondering how this man knew these things about him. He said, you were shot down over Hanoi. I was. I was. And he thought, how did he know I was a fighter pilot? And then the man said, you spent six years in a North Vietnamese prison camp before being released. Charles Plum started to get a little concerned. Was this man stalking him? They didn't have Google at the time. He thought to himself, how does he know so much about me? And he asked finally. He says, I, I don't want to be rude, but how did you know all this about me? And the man said, I packed your parachute. I served on the Kitty Hawk. And the day you were shot down, I packed your parachute. Charles Plum, in that moment, and offered the man a handshake. But instead, the man gave him a hug. And then Plum said, he said the next words that he'll always remember. The man said to him, I guess it worked. I guess it worked. And they got to know each other and became friends. And the man went back to his table. And Plum could not get out of his mind this man in the bowels of an aircraft carrier taking the time to meticulously fold and pack this parachute. And that the one time Captain Plum needed it, it worked the way it was supposed to because of the efforts and the work that were put in for him. And he thought, I've never given thought to that person down there who did this for me, the person who prepped so carefully that saved my life when I needed it. And how I'm the big fighter pilot, the captain, the hot shot, he said. And yet all of it would have been for naught, if not for the hard work that this man put in. Now, why am I telling you this story? Well, I like having things that remind you of what's taken place in your life. You see, because today, I want you to pay attention to who packed your parachute, not only to get here today on your Confirmation Sunday, but for all the things that are about to take place in your life as you start to reach adulthood. Careful planning on your behalf, sacrifices of time and energy, blood, sweat, and tear, and especially as it has to do with your being brought up in the faith. I told you this the other night. This day is the finishing of the promises your parents made when you were baptized. They promised to raise you in a faith. And they've kept that promise. 
that brought you here today. So the first thing I want to make sure you do is to stand up for me, please. Stand up. Come on. It's okay. Turn around and find your parents in the group out there. You know where they're sitting. Go ahead. Now, I know you're teenagers, and life can be a little difficult with parents and everything else, but I think your parents at least deserve a thank you, a thank you for what they've done. So, would you mind doing that? Go thank your parents. Go ahead. I'll wait for you. Go ahead. Maybe give them a hug, a thank you for what they've done. And then come on back. Because now I'm going to do something else. I want your parents to come on up. Come on, parents. Right, you're wondering, did you dress for the occasion, right? Now, in pairings, because if both parents are here, I want you to separate yourselves evenly and find a corner of the parachute, though parachutes don't have corners. Come on up but stand next to each other. Don't separate. Husband and wife should be together. You don't get to choose somebody else. Good, good. Now get tight and lift up the parachute. Yeah. Um, if you were a Sunday school teacher of one of these confirmands over the years, stand on up and come on up if you're here. Any of their Sunday school teachers? Here we go. Come on up. No? Scotty? Gwen? Find a spot. No, 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 no. <laughs> and I'm sure there are other people, myself included, who participated in raising them in the faith and in some small part getting them here. Now I want all of you good people to lift up that parachute. Confirmands, go ahead and go under. These are some of the people who packed your par parachute, who prepared what was necessary to keep you safe, to make sure you had a security net instead of below you, over you, but that made the way for you to come here today. And by the way, they're not letting go of this par parachute any time soon. Your parents will love you for as long as they are around to love you. But I want you to understand where you are today. And you can add God to this. You can add Christ to this. You can add all those who played a part in raising you in the faith. Even friends who may have given you some good advice about it. We all packed your parachute. Honor that and remember that today. Amen. Amen. Go back to your seats. Parents, you can give that to Scotty. He'll put it away for me. Confirmands, reach underneath your chair and grab those little plastic packet that. Open it up. Blake, you've got the loudest voice, so why don't you stand up? Right. Turn around and show them what we gave you as a gift this year.
And trust me, it wasn't easy finding the ones that didn't have guns in your hand, their hands. <laughs> These are actually skydiver parachutes. And we wanted them each to have one as a reminder of the fact that none of us goes alone, that somebody plays a role in this very thing in their lives. And maybe later in the day, if the wind picks up, they can go and throw it in the air and see if it works. I'm not going to have them try it now because it could all go wrong really fast. Um, but, however, um, put those in your chair. Put those in your chair and stand up. I need two of you, raise your hands, to give these out to everybody who'd like to help. Just two of you. Blake, who else? Alexa, come on. They're not as big, but you all get a little parachute person. And they're going to go around and start, I don't know, they can toss them at you if they want. Take a handful, Alexa. In fact, Jolie, take a handful. Ladies, would you like to help? Take a handful and go out there. Let's give them out. Come on. Everybody gets one. So that all of you here today can remember somebody, somebody's packed your parachute in life. So let's make sure everyone gets one. And if they miss you, put your hand up and they will find you. Some of them love throwing things at you. If you don't have one yet, put your hand up. If you don't have one yet. Anyone else, put your hand up high and keep it there so they can see. You folks up front over here get one? All right, good. All right, when you're all done, come back up. Now the rest of you don't say we never gave you anything. And by the way, each one is only going to cost you $20. Blake, I'll take that. Thank you. Now, let's confirm you young people into full membership of the church. Friends in Christ, we are received into the church through the sacrament of baptism and, and the rite of confirmation. And you, we nurture you and support you in the midst of this family of Christ. Through prayer and study, you have all been led by the Holy Spirit to affirm your baptism and to claim in our presence the covenantal relationship with Christ and members of this church for service to Christ and to the world by using the gifts which the Holy Spirit has given you. So I would ask you all now, confirmands, please rise. I ask you these questions. Do you desire to affirm your baptism into the faith and the family of Jesus Christ? And do you renounce the powers of evil and desire the freedom of new life in Christ? And do you profess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? And do you promise by the grace of God to be Christ's disciples to follow in the way of our Lord, to resist oppression and evil, to show love and justice, and to witness to the work and the word of Jesus Christ as best as you are able? And do you promise according to the grace given to you to grow in the Christian faith and to be a faithful member of the church of Jesus Christ and this church and to celebrate Christ's presence and furthering Christ's mission in the world. Please be seated.
Scotty, Gwen, let's call them forward. Alexa Odoi. You will hear this morning words from each of their credos, their faith statements that they have written uh, to become confirmed. So these words are their words. Being a follower of Jesus means learning from his actions and his teachings and continuing to do them today. This includes having compassion giving to the poor, dismantling systems of oppression, and loving your neighbor. Jesus challenged the rules and people that he believed did not do good and went against societal norms to sit with and have respect for the marginalized. Being a follower of Jesus means striving to do the same. If religion truly is a guide for life, then an important element of it should actually be acting. I think that serving people in our community and other communities is, big, is a big part of the reason why we gather together as a church. How can you be a follower of Jesus without the drive to do good work? Bless, O oh Lord, this young person with your heavenly grace and help them to be filled with your Holy Spirit until they enter into your heavenly kingdom. Amen. Take that with you. There you go. See, Scotty. Each confirmand is given a handmade cross that for about the last 15 years, one of our members, Larry Jones, has made for them. And each year, they're a little bit different to be unique. So if you get a chance today, Larry and Ruth couldn't be here with us today. If you get a chance, look at the beautiful craftsmanship that uh, these crosses hold as one of their keepsakes. Megan Elizabeth Migliaro. There we go. Turn around. I see the Bible as a resource to your faith and what you believe. It is a stepping stone to discovering your beliefs. The Bibles provide important morals and lessons as well as stories to bring to life the sufferings as well as some of the events that took place thousands of years ago. To me, the Bible is like a, a guideline to lead you to taking the steps to really understanding what you believe. I also think that the events that you have experienced will influence this, and the Bible can help you in those cases. You can sometimes relate to some of the stories and experiences people went through in the Bible. For example, you could be a teen mom and could be struggling just like Mary did. However, you can use her story and her experiences to guide you through yours. While the outcome might be different, some of the same principles are in place. And I think that, yes, it is inspired by God. Turn around. And kneel. Here we go. Head down. Bless, O oh God, this young person with your heavenly grace 
that they may be yours forever and fill them with your Holy Spirit until they enter into your kingdom. Amen. Jolie Signor. Church is not only about the morning services that are held every Sunday. It's about giving, it's about getting involved in mission trip soup kitchens and donating to the local food drive. When I was younger, I remember making trips back and forth from the church to the nursing home down the road, giving people warm meals. This made me feel so good because I felt like I was giving others a chance to eat a delicious warm meal. In addition, I remember taking countless trips down to the food bank to learn about how I can help and donate food to help the less fortunate. I believe one good deed leads to another, not only for those that gave, but the ones who received. They in turn will hopefully want to reach out and give to others as well. Bless, O Lord, this young person with your heavenly grace, that she may enter into your heavenly kingdom and fill her with your Holy Spirit, that she may be with you forever. Amen. Samantha Spinelli. When I first think of being a follower of Jesus, I think of the 12 disciples. Following Jesus means agreeing and believing in his teachings. Understanding what he preached helps to give you a moral compass. From what I've learned about Jesus, I can embrace obviously just being a good person, but also standing up for what you believe in. Jesus stood for compassion, love, kindness, acceptance, forgiveness. Today, being a follower of Jesus means treating people the way Jesus did. He was very kind and loving towards everyone despite their circumstances. He didn't even hate his enemies. He would pray for them and hope that they would become better people. His actions are worthy of following because when you are kind to others, that hope becomes a chain reaction. I also think that being a good person and putting out positive energy, you will get that, that back in return. Bless, O oh God, this child with your heavenly grace that she may know you and follow you. And bless her with your Holy Spirit until she enters into your heavenly kingdom. Amen.
Blake Sussman. I became a person of faith from my parents taking me to church and Sunday school when I was little. I sense that this is this I sense that it has been God in my life when I feel things are going in the right direction. It always feels like God is there when I am feeling sad or alone. I feel like he is there to help me. Today I am a moderate attendant at church, and I help at my youth group when I can, including going on mission trips. I am unsure of where I am going to go with my life and my faith, but I am willing to learn more and hopefully find the path I want to follow. But in terms of today, I am happy where I am with my religion. It is interesting to learn about it and how it can be used in my everyday life. Bless, O oh God, this young person with your heavenly grace that he may know you and follow you and pour out upon him your Holy Spirit until he enters into your kingdom. Amen. Sophia Suzanne Peeling. I think if the church allowed more people to grow their relationship with God and the church and, and the church and the way we allow children to explore it, they would be able to form a stronger connection to the church. Seeing the kids in the nursery where I've helped out makes me believe it would be better that way because they're all so accepting and kind to all the other kids. In general, the church needs to be more accepting and open to change. Church is such a big part of people's lives. Imagine what it could do to change people's lives if there was more emphasis on different opinions and personal experiences. Bless, O oh God, this young person with your heavenly grace, that she may come to know you and pour out upon her your Holy Spirit until she enters into your kingdom. Amen. Confirmants, please rise. Every member of this family of faith as they enter into this church are welcomed with the right hand of fellowship. And so I offer that to each of you as you now become adult members of this congregation. God bless you. Know the gifts that you have to offer not just to this church, but to the world itself, so that you can share them with others and make a big difference with little acts of love. Would you please face the congregation? Members and friends, please welcome our newest members of the church. Come on up. Up, 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 up.
Please be seated. Let's gather our hearts together with a prayer of confession as we come to Christ's table of grace and love. Gracious and, oh, Warren, we can't do it before Warren actually plays. Sorry. Warren, take it away. All right. Uh, confirmation Day, an important day in the life of a Christian. In the Bible, uh, on occasion, God would recognize important events and and uh, important times of change in people's lives with a name change. So Abram became Abraham. Simon, when he declared that Christ was, that Jesus was the Christ, the Messiah, he became Peter. Saul became Paul. The name of this hymn is, I Will Change Your Name. I will change your name. You shall no longer be called wounded outcast lonely or afraid I will change your name your new name shall be confidence joyfulness Faithfulness, friend of God, one who seeks my face. I will change your name. You shall no longer be called wounded, outcast, lonely or afraid. I will your name, your new name shall be confidence, joyfulness, overcoming one, faithfulness, friend of God, one who seeks my face, one who seeks my face. Seeks my face. Let's offer up our prayer of confession to God. Gracious and loving God, we come to you as broken people, each of us in some way wounded and each of us in some way wounding others. We give you thanks that you would invite us to this table, but we bring to you first all of those issues we bring to hand to you the broken pieces of our lives and ask only in return your unbroken peace. We are sorry for all that we have done and all that we have left undone and ask today for your forgiveness. And we take a moment, O oh God, now in quiet and in silence to lift up to you the broken pieces of our lives. Come close now and hear the whispering prayers of your children. Our God says, behold, I make all things new. Your sins are forgiven. Thanks be for God, to God for God's wonderful love and grace. Amen. In our tradition, as we gather around this table, everyone is welcome to join us. 
No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here with us. Our confirmands today, as is our tradition, get to serve communion to you. And there are individually wrapped gluten-free pieces of bread if you need those. Otherwise, at least for the last year, we've been using the peel top communion. Just be careful when you open them that you don't spill them all over your shirt. Uh, but eventually we will get back to serving uh, the gifts of God's table the way we always have. On the night of his betrayal, Jesus gathered with all of his disciples and he took bread. And after breaking it, he gave it to the disciples saying, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, he took the cup. And after giving thanks, he said, this cup is the new covenant of my blood shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Ministering in his name, we offer you this bread and this cup. Confirmands, come forward. Two, two here, any two. Here's yours, here's yours. communion and would like it, please raise your hand. Put that there. You put that there. Put that. Go back to your seat.
Jesus said, as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, do this in remembrance of me. Go ahead. Let us pray. We thank you, O God, for inviting us to this table of grace and love, that you have forgiven our sins, that you have renewed and refreshed us to do your work in your world. Send us out into this new day to be your followers, and to make a difference in the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As, our, as our, is our tradition, we lift up to God the prayer concerns of our people, for those that we care about, those that we love, and even those that we do not yet fully know. We ask that you keep Mike Pirtle in your prayers, who is struggling in Hartford Hospital in ICU with Lou Gehrig's disease. We ask that you would keep Ben Moreland and his family in your prayers. Ben's father passed away yesterday. Uh, to lift up Sandy Gerard, who um, had part of her kidney removed and is going into treatment. Uh, they think they've gotten all of the cancer and the margins, but keep her in your prayers. It's still a long recovery. And what other names would you like to lift up this morning for us to keep in prayer? Just call it out. Keep our new members, no longer confirmands, in your prayers. Anyone else? Let's gather our hearts together in prayer then. Gracious and loving God, we come to you this morning with burdens that each of us carries in our hearts. And we ask that you would be with all those that we keep in our hearts, each of those who are struggling today. We pray for those who are hungry and homeless, that you would provide for them more than just a piece of bread to eat and a pillow on which to lay their heads, but that you would offer to them through us a place to call home and a people to call family. We pray for all children, but especially those who are abused and neglected, those who have run from home we ask that you would guard them and guide them safely to those who would love them and care for them. We pray for those who struggle in the shadows of mental illness, emotional illness, spiritual illness, for the elderly, the frail, and the afraid, and for those who care for them so patiently. We pray for those who struggle during difficult economic times and ask that you would give them courage and hope for the days ahead. And we ask that you be with all those who struggle with addictions of all kinds. For you know, O oh God, each of us clings to something too tightly in our own lives. And we pray, O oh God, for those who stand to protect our freedoms and our liberties, that you would guard them as they guard us and return them safely to their homes. And we pray for that which eludes us most often and most easily. We pray today for peace. Peace in our world, peace in the Middle East, peace in our nation, peace in our homes, in our schools, in our workplaces, peace where peace must first reside in each of our hearts. And we pray these things in the name of your Son and our Lord Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, who taught us to pray together 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now we would ask you, if you are able, to please rise and singing vigorously what I've always known as an old camp song uh, that I remember going off to camp. Pass it on. I will ask the confirmands after the benediction to come forward and to line up in front of the kneeling bench so that each of you who would like can come on up and to congratulate them on this special day for them. And now may God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May God lift up the light of love upon you and show you God's grace. Go in peace. Amen. And he will raise you up on eagle's wings, bear you on the breath of dawn, make you to shine.